Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. I have a story, a couple of stories up now from the Commanders Mini Camp, including one I'm going to talk about in a minute. And also had a story leading into the mini camp about some of the holes or some of the questions they still have at various positions. And we'll I'll kind of touch on that just a little bit. Anyway, so also, you can if you want to become a club member, go to the Empire Media YouTube page, go on your laptop, see the word join, click on, you know, click, find whatever membership works for you and go from there. And there's going to be a lot of those private Zooms that I do for the gold members, especially, and we'll have other stuff coming up as well. So um, take advantage and get more insight and more information, hopefully. Anyway, today, another wrap up of the, of the Commander's Minicamp, day two. We were able to be out there for all but the seven on seven work. So saw about 45 minutes of their, of their workout today. But let's start with some of the news. You probably would have heard it by now, but just for a little context, Johnny Newton, their second round pick, will undergo surgery on his left foot for a partial Jones fracture. That's the similar injury that he had on his right foot that he had repaired in January. Now, we saw him at practice yesterday with his boot in the left foot or his left foot in a boot. And um turns out this foot that he had surgery on initially was the right one. He had that in early January. And he was recovered in time to do a pro day for himself. I think it was just a solo pro day for himself in mid-April. And right now, there's no timetable as to when he's going to be ready to, to return to action. Dan Quinn said he'd have the surgery within a week. And that's all we know for now. Now, this, this was discovered during a checkup when he was getting his right foot just re-examined to make sure everything was still okay. And they checked out, they were checking out his left foot as well. And that's when they discovered this. So rather than wait and have something happen later, they wanted to get it taken care of. Now, clearly it's better to have it happen now than in training camp when you're going to be set back even more. And we saw that. We saw that with Federian Mathis. We've seen that with other rookies. Cole Turner was having a good start to his first camp, had an injury in camp and that was it. And maybe he wouldn't have done anything anyway, but it certainly puts you really far behind, especially for a rookie. And Mathis, I don't think has really shown a whole lot to be honest in part because those injuries missed mo almost all of his first year with the knee injury and then last year in the in camp he had the calf injuries so you know that's something that i think for them they'd rather see it happen now for newton of course you don't want to see it at all but you'd rather have it happen now than later uh, and again when this was discovered it was sometime between i don't have the exact time because we don't know the exact time when this was discovered but sometime between his pro day and i think it, i don't know if it was after the draft but you're gonna, there's going to be another physical or checkup with this. So sometime between then and now, it was discovered clearly. So um, anyway, there you go. And and they clearly have big big plans for him. Dan Quinn talked about that. He loves the competitiveness that he's shown. He's he's a guy that's played through various injuries. I mean, shoot, he had he hurt this during the season and didn't know it. Doesn't even remember which game it was. Just knows that it was in the middle of the season. He still went on to it in Big Ten Player of the Year. So. They, they, as Dan Quinn called him a, a basically a tough ass competitor. So they have big, they have the big plans for him and they, but they need him healthy. And, and he's going to be a guy that will rotate with Allen and Payne and then maybe get more snaps than guys like Mathis and Ridgeway. And Ridgeway to me has shown more than Mathis. Mathis has to have a, this is a big year for Mathis. You got to show a lot more than what you've shown the last couple of years. Now he's more of a run stopper, but you got to have, you got to do a lot more in that area to help out this year, to show more of what you can do. I don't know if this is why Newton fell a little bit, but we're not talking about this grand fall. He was projected by a lot of people as a, poss as a possible first round pick. Well, he, fe he fell all the way to 36. So it wasn't like he fell two rounds and this was the big thing. I don't remember seeing um, any sort of injury concerns on him other than the, the initial injury, but um, so again, it wasn't this big fall, but he did maybe fell just a few spots more, but that may have been, that may have also been, had to do with the run on tackles late in the, you know, especially late in the first round. So anyways, I know some of you are thinking, sitting here thinking, oh, the curse of the second round pick again, it's a new regime. I don't, I think those, that kind of thinking gets a little bit old. However, I understand it because you need to, these guys need, you know, 
you want to see these guys stay healthy to show what they can do because this franchise will not take the steps it needs to unless they hit on more of these high picks. And if one guy, if a first round pick is only pretty good or is good, but the second and third round guys don't contribute, it's hard to build a good team that way. So they need these guys to contribute, but I'm not, I don't think it's worth going overboard at this point for what this is. I think he's going to be okay. And then from there, you see what happens. So um, also Quinn, Dan Quinn, we talked, we were able to talk to him the day before practice, talked about Jaden Daniels, of course. And one of the things I talked about yesterday is one of the things that he talked about today, which is his some Daniels at times taking command. And what I saw yesterday and what we saw a little bit today, but what Quinn also saw was just how Daniels would kind of like motion the guys to get into the correct alignment for that particular route or play. And so I saw that a few times that suggests of course, that he's been in his playbook and then he knows things. And I don't think they have any fears about him picking up the playbook, but I think they liked that he was doing that. And it's funny because Quinn said that he and Peters, when, when they went back and watched the um, practice film together, I think they were struck by how crisp and clean it was. And I think it gave him a lot of optimism about what this class could accomplish um, this year and down the road. Because, and even he said, like a lot of the, the passes are not hitting the ground. These, these balls are being caught. And that's not only Daniels, but that is Sam Hartman as well. So, um, but I do think with Daniels, it's, it's, we see, you know, it's, you're not going to see all that the kid can do now. I mean, part of what his game is, is are the legs. So you're not going to see all of that in rookie minicamp. And you don't, you don't really want to see a lot of that during the OTAs or even mini camp, because we know he can do that. What he needs to do is stay in the pocket and work on the pass game, work on the timing with the receivers, get that down. So that's what he needs to do. So we're not going to see all that he can do until he actually gets into a game. And we'll see it at flashes at times. I mean, you know, you can always see something, but you're not, you don't want to see quarterbacks taking off and running a lot when it's a seven on seven. I go back to the Robert days and I remember watching guys who played quarterback who would be on the sidelines during those practices and they'd see him run and they just kind of shake their head because like, especially in this, in his when, after he'd been here for a few years and they'd see it, it was like, just, you don't want to see that too often at all. And for him, it was happening too often. And so that's why I say, you don't want to see that happen a lot. So not a good sign when you're doing that. Um, also, one of the things that with Quinn that to me has always jumped out is just, how he wants to find ways to use everybody. Greg Williams was absolutely like that. And that's, I thought it was, a, it was masterful. What Williams would do is find what a guy could do well and then tap into that and find some packages where that particular skill could help them. I think Quinn has is, is, is said a lot of the same things too. And one of the things he talked about today too, one of his, he said one of his favorite players was Ray Allen in basketball. And Quinn is clearly a big basketball guy because he ta he taps into the knowledge of some of those, the NBA coaches, even some college coaches. And he brought up Ray Allen as just like a guy who had an elite skill of catching and shooting. And he said that if a player doesn't know what's the one thing they do really well, then how he's like, how are we supposed to know? So like, you got to know as a player, what you can do, then you can build off that, you know, feed that info, whatever. And then you can start creating some situations to get them to contribute. So anyway, I just found that was, I found that interesting. I think he likes to talk not so much NBA, but he does like to, he does, he will go to other sports and try to bring lessons into it to football. And um, so anyway, just thought I'd sh share that one too. Now, somebody on the, on the YouTube comments asked me about Sam Hartman and what I knew and wanted to ask about him. So I asked him, actually asked about him today. So shout out. I can't remember who it was, but shout out to you anyway. So, and I will, because they obviously had four quarterbacks already with Mariota, obviously Daniels, Mariota, uh, Jeff, Jake Fromm, and then Jeff Driscoll. So then they drafted Sam Hartman. So the one thing that Quinn said is that in basically going around the country looking for quarterbacks, I mean, this was their pursuit in the offseason, looking at all these quarterbacks. So you get to like other guys other than just Jaden Daniels at the top. And they did not bring in Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm was here. And, you know, Driscoll is a guy who's bounced around. So maybe you bring in a guy like, like Hartman in and they gave him a good chunk for, for an undrafted free agent. Not listen, I mean, it's, I think it's a couple hundred thousand dollars guaranteed. You can still cut a guy in that situation. It's not unheard of, but what it does suggest is that they certainly like him enough to think that he can compete with those with Fromm and Driscoll for, for that number three spot. And then, then from there, can you develop him into 
a solid backup for Daniels. Um, let's not jump the gun here and look at a Heath Gus situation or even RG3 and Kirk. Um, very, very different. Anyway, one thing I did notice with Hartman yesterday, and so after the practice yesterday, and it was a rainy day, so you had to go inside. We were in the bubble. And they ended practice around 2.15, and then the interviews were done around 2.45. I went and did a few things for SportsCenter, um, and then came back in, had to write a news story for ESPN.com. And then I went to tape my podcast. And during that time, around six o'clock or so, maybe was, maybe a little bit before that, Hartman came in. And so this is almost four hours after they were done practicing. But he came in and he just, he like, he just walked on the field. And all he was doing was standing and kind of like doing some hand motions. Then you can, if you're watching on YouTube, it's just kind of like pointing here or maybe just a little bit of a fist motion here or there. And as if he's at the line of scrimmage and motioning some signals to teammates for whatever call or whatever, you know, whatever call had to be made in, in that situation, did that for a while. I mean, I, I was maybe a half hour or so um, that he definitely did. He was doing that for a little bit. So just little things like that. Nobody else was coming in. And um, but those are little things that can help a guy maybe elevate to being a quality backup for some team, whether here or somewhere else, but those mental reps, like that, when you hear about mental reps, that's part of what that is too. And everybody learns differently. Like not everybody learns the same way. So some guys can walk, look on the chalkboard and just see it. Some guys need to take that and go out to the field. Some guys just get on the field. That's how they do it. Anyways, just thought it was interesting and wanted to pass that along. So um, there you go. Now, you know, um, again, we did not see the seven on seven today. So a lot of what we just saw was the warmups again. And, you know, you see the one thing too, and yesterday with the quarterbacks, the Daniels and Hartman, they do this drill where you roll out and you're throwing into a net and they have three spots in the net. And, um, they'll like, they'll have them like today. What they would do is they'd have them like chop their feet, go through the bags. Watching Daniel's footwork is pretty good. He's got really good footwork. Hartman's not bad, but Daniel's has really good footwork. And you come out of that, you you kind of go back and forth around the bags. There, I think it's about five set up, something like that. And you, you know, you're going to go over the bags, chop, then you're going to slide in and out and you're going to come back and you're going to roll out and they're going to tell you which, which target they want you to hit. So for example, they have one, two, one, two, three, and, you know, you come out and do it. And both those guys were pretty good at it. Yesterday, Hartman, I thought, I wouldn't say struggle with it, but I just thought that he was a little bit behind Daniels on it. Today, I thought Hartman was much better with it. And um, so anyway, I just, I, it's a drill that I enjoy watching because it is, it incorporates footwork and incorporates, you know, you got to come out and you got to keep your head up and you got to get your hips around. You do a lot of things with getting you, you got to get your hips around right on some of these throws. And that's something that you have to do too. And also it's a quick decision, boom, two, boom, go right? One boom, go, you know, now you know where to throw and it just gives you that visualization. So if a defender is, you know, if you're throwing to a one, you know, down in the right, right in the corner. So you're trying to throw it away from the defense, right? You know, the little things like that's ball placement. So I always enjoy that drill. And I thought they both did actually a pretty good job on that today as well. And one thing they are doing is working with, um, Daniel or with both quarterbacks taking snaps from under center, something that Daniels did not do a lot of in college. And one of the guys, by the way, and is who has been working at center here is Mason Brooks. They don't, I don't know that they have any other centers here, but when you're a guard and you're an undrafted free agent a year ago, you got to play it. You got to do everything you can to make this team. Part of what a guard, a backup guard has to do in that spot is learn how to either, you got to either be a center as well or a tackle. And he's not a tackle in the NFL. So, um, anyway, so he's been working here doing that. And they've been taking, again, some snaps under center and working on handoffs from that spot because that's going to be a part of the offense for sure. Then there was a T-shirt. I'm sure you saw this. So uh, Dan Quinn, T-shirt gate, right? Um, Dan Quinn during the press conference wore a T-shirt that had, it was a commander shirt, but it had the W and then it had a, a, a feather from like, you know, a headdress on the side of the W. And it's not, something the team made or is selling. I don't know where he got it. It's, I don't know if, I don't know. I'm assuming somebody sent it to him and whoever, whoever made it, it's probably making a few dollars today. Anyway, he wore it. I know some people making a big deal out of it on social media. It does not mean anything. 
I think he just thought it, you know, my understanding is he thought it was a cool shirt and he put it out. It does not mean they're looking at the name. It doesn't it, at this time, it does not mean they're changing it back. They're not going to do that. So for that crowd, it's just, it's not happening. I think um, they've already put that to bed and I don't, nothing is happening on that end right now either. It just was a guy who's coaching this team probably shouldn't have worn the shirt, but he did. And there you go. That's the end of it for me. Um, so, you know, there you go. If you want to buy the shirt, you can find the link on social media. All right. Now getting back to football and on field stuff, because that's what I'm going to stick to now. Again, we told you yesterday, there's just a lot more energy here. And I, I do wonder how much of that is, first of all, that's kind of Quinn's MO, right? And very big into energy, very big into competition, but he also brought on 13 former NFL players. And with that comes energy. I think there's a reason why he does that. And I think that's part of it. And we, I told you about like the little thing they did Friday where they did again today. I'd be curious to see if they do that in the OTAs with the veterans here. I don't know if veterans are going to respond the same way in May for some of this stuff that they would in August, for example, where you, you gather and, you know, they do it like it's a hype drill. So you, you know, after they stretch, they just gather in a big circle. I have video up here eventually on that, on, on the, on the, on their YouTube page, the short section, they gather and they just kind of get them hyped up. And then there's a bag drill where they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they call it a competition and the coaches are into it. And the funny thing is one of the guys really into it is Cliff Kingsbury. And and I know others have mentioned this and shout out Blaine who emailed me about that. Um, but um, it's not, you didn't think that was his persona necessarily when you're in the press conference and all that, he's kind of more buttoned up in those situations, but you put him on the field and he's definitely in his element. I think this is what the guy likes to do. And he gets into those drills and he gets in, he's very, he's very active during the thing. It's not like he's boisterous out. Like he's not Eric B with, you know, being where you can hear him from half a field away. Chris Harris was like that too, where you can hear them from a long way away, but he is definitely very active. And he spent a lot of, he's spending a lot of time with the quarterbacks as you would expect right now. Um, but he's one of those guys that was kind of in there, just kind of, a, you know, encouraging guys getting into it, getting into it. And um, so I, but I do think that as Dan Quinn said, Part of what he does with that is it's he wants to set um, sets the intention of the practice. So I think one of the things it's funny because um, I when I before the coaching search I, I remember talking to somebody who worked with him. He said he's as good as anybody at setting the intention for the building, right? And I think this is part of that example. Mm -hmm. What it means, I don't know, but if you can get guys to maybe be a little bit more excited in practice. I will see. I don't know if they're going to do this all the time or if this is just something they do with rookies. Um, but again, I don't know that veterans in May and June will be doing that. We'll see. We'll, we'll be out there on Tuesday for our first look at the vets with uh, Dan Quinn. But um, anyway, bottom line though, is there's more energy in the building. I think this is an example. And I think that was necessary because I can tell you there wasn't a whole lot. That's why I think the enemy stood out last year because you didn't have Chris Harris provided it, but there weren't a lot of coaches there that were providing it. And, you know, um, it wasn't a strong staff. So we'll just say that. And I think this one, I think that's where this staff, I think that's where this team is in a better spot. It's, and it's not just in the certain parts, it's in the entire operation. And that's part of it. Um, the other thing that Quinn talked about, he's not, Listen, we brought up left tackle. It's the first time we've had a chance to talk to him really since in a while, because after the draft, we taught, we were able to talk to him about Jaden Daniels only. I mean, that, that was all the time we had. It was just talking about Jaden Daniels. So we haven't talked to him about like left, the tackle position receiver and all that. And I will say this, that what he said is he's not going to sit here and fret about the tackle situation right now. His, his MO or his job right now is to today work on developing the players out there today not to sit there and worry about what they're going to do in September. As he said, there's plenty of time to, to go over all those situations and to see who can do what. And I, the hard part with like, even with like a Brandon Coleman, I'm watching him today, but it's really hard to, to know what the kid can do until you get the pads on with, with the receivers, with the defensive backs, you can watch them move with the quarterbacks. You can watch them move. You can see the retention of plays and how they react to things with Lyman. You got to get him in pads. And so until we see Brandon Coleman in pads, we're not going to know, is this going to be a guy that can contribute this year? Can he, could he start this year? Um, or are they going to have to maybe do something in that position? 
And I'm like you, man. I still, I have questions and I know there are questions on the right side as well. And um, I'll just, you know, we all know that, but what can they do about it at this point, I think is another matter. And there are, there's Donovan Smith's out there and I've talked to before. He's, he's last two teams haven't brought him back. A lot of penalties, um, but he's out there. And so we'll see what happens when we get to camp and then we get a chance and they get a chance more importantly, they more than we, because we don't matter, but they get a chance to see what these guys can do and then decide, do they need to do something more at that spot? So you're always, I would say this, you're always on the lookout for more talent. That's how, again, that's how a guy like Sam Hartman ended up here. They had four quarterbacks already, didn't need him, but they felt like he had a chance to compete to maybe win the job. So they brought him in. So I think, I don't think they're done looking for things. I think these, you know, teams are always looking at every possible situation or, or um, possible solution or a guy that can help them improve. So just because some guys are out there doesn't mean they view them as better alternatives right now. And so, but anyways, point is he's not sitting there fretting over it. And I would say the same thing about receiver. I think, I think that's going to be an interesting one to watch because you got McLaurin, you got Dotson, and then what? What do you got it beyond that? Can Luke McCaffrey be a guy that helps? I don't know. And speaking of Luke, I will say for a guy who switched positions just a couple of years ago, he looks pretty good. And again, going against rookies, you're not even going against rookies. Really, today, all we, actually, yesterday we saw him a little bit against against other guys, and I think he looks smooth in those spots. And in just watching him on air today, because again, we didn't see seven on seven, so we never saw him against defense today. But I do think for a guy again who switched from quarterback to this spot a couple only a couple of years ago, he looks pretty good. Has I feel I feel like he moves pretty well, fluid with his cuts, comes back for the ball well. I told you, extends for the ball well, catches. He's not, you know, he catches with his hands, not bringing it, not a body catcher. Well, a couple of things I, and I do think like his breaks are all right. I'll be curious to see how that works against uh, veteran defensive backs. But one of the things he'll have to do, and they talked to him about this today is keep your eyes up. So when you're going, like you run around and you're you chop your feet, his head was going way down. So you want to keep those eyes up. And like, one of the things that I think Dotson and, and um, does well is that like he's running at you. He's keeping your eye, his eyes up, looking right at you. You don't know what he's going to do. And if you're looking at his eyes, he can throw you off. Right. So when you're putting your head down, now you're, you know, you're taking away a potential target for them to be fooled. Right. And so I think that's one thing that he just, that's a little, that's a little thing. And it's something you can easily fix. But that's one of those little things that you're still, when you're still young at a position or new to a position, those subtleties take a little bit more time. And that's where I think he's working on as well. But I do think he's a fluid guy. And, um, you know, I think that's good. And then um, Kaz Allen um, was out, has been out here the last couple of days. And again, he switched positions well, new receiver. Last year, he fought the ball. I mean, I, I mean, he fought, he just fought the ball. He couldn't, catch, he wasn't really, he wasn't a good, didn't have good hands. And so if he had made the team, he's not a guy that you could have put out there from scrimmage because he just couldn't catch the ball. And he's got, there are definitely some fumbling issues, the concerns as well. But I will say, like, I felt like he was catching the ball better the last two days um, than he did. It looked a little bit, it looked just looked more natural than he did last year um, for sure. So see where he develops because the kid's quick and, you know, he, I mean, he's got quickness. So you always want to see how he develops, but I felt like he was catching the ball better for sure um and yeah again for for the old lineman um and, you know mm. for the old lineman it's just this is just a teaching period and there's little things again like it's subtleties it's subtleties it's subtleties i like this is what i enjoy so there was one time where coleman and brooks do a little double team and coleman comes off the double team goes to um and it's just a defender holding the bag then he's going to work off the double team and get to another coach who's standing there, right? That's just, that's his guy. That's his target. So the, he does it the first time. And I'm going to put video of this up too, but does it the first time. And it's a little thing, it's just the footwork, right? So Brian John or Bob, um, Bobby Johnson goes and brings him back and just kind of corrects him. You can see it's, it's about taking that second step. Your first step is going up. His second step was too far inside. So you're losing, you're going to lose your ability to get off and work off that. He wanted him to take a wider set, you know, just have his left foot be a little bit more, stay a little bit more square, I should say. And it gives you a better chance to maintain your leverage and then work off to your guy. Second that, but that's what, that's a little subtle stuff that you go over in camp 
and you look for, and that's what he worked on. It's what he did the second time. They were happy with the second rep. So anyways, wanted to point that out because that kid could matter, man. You know, they need that kid to, to develop. And so you get that stuff down. Could he do it? You know, the funny thing is, and I'm going to have, I actually talked to his college, his position coach in college, and I'm going to play that interview this week. But he's, he's part of the thing is he's only about six, four, you know, it's a little bit more than six, four, but his, his length is, is he has good length. So his, his height for offensive tackles at the combine was one of the, he was one of the shorter guys there, but for his arm length, he was in the top 10 out of like 32 tackles. I think it was. So he's got good length. So his length allows him to play bigger than his height. And, but you look at his body size, his body type, it does look like more of a guard. However, the length gives and the length and the footwork gives him an advantage to play tackle. That's why teams are, aren't sure where he's going to best fit. And I, and again, I, I have the position coach coming on and he'll, he'll tell you where he thinks he fits best, best and why, you know, he moved him back to a certain, but back to tackle last year. So anyway, that's it for me. I got nothing else from the mini camp and just day two, We'll be back on Tuesday to see the veterans report for the OTAs. Our first look to see them in this, you know, a lot of new faces and then just see um, how everything goes from there. So I'll be back on Tuesday with another episode and check out the media empire media YouTube page. I'm going to be putting some video shorts up from some practice highlights, just from Daniels, from Ben Stinnett, from Luke McCaffrey, from from Coleman and of course Daniels and Hartman. So there you go. That's it. Talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 